If you are 25 weeks pregnant, you probably have a lot of questions like how is your baby developing? What should you expect at your next appointment? When should you start thinking about prenatal classes? And we are going to talk about all of that and more right now. But first, if you're new here, my name is Diana. I'm a physician assistant and I specialize in women's health and gynecology. You are watching In the Pink. And if you're new here, In the Pink means in good health and spirit. So if you like being healthy and being happy, click subscribe because you're in the right place. So at 25 weeks pregnant, you are six months and one week, and you have 15 weeks left to go. Your baby weighs around one and a half pounds at this point. Their crown rump measurement, which means the head to their bottom is almost nine inches, and the baby's height from head to toe is about 12 and a half inches, so over a foot tall now. Now keep in mind that every baby is gonna grow at a different rate, so these measurements are just averages, and your baby might be a little bit bigger or it might be a little bit smaller and that's totally normal. Earlier in the baby's development, the baby's liver was the main producer of red blood cells, but now at 25 weeks, the bone marrow has taken over as the main site for red blood cell production. The baby's sense of smell has developed now and they can smell flavors of the amniotic fluid. They're also starting to develop a sense of equilibrium and they can start to sense up and down and over the next few weeks or so they are going to make their way head down and if they don't that's okay that doesn't mean that they don't have a good sense of equilibrium but that does mean that your baby is what we call breech three of my four kids were breech your baby will have more and more movements at 25 weeks and you're going to start to notice a sleep wake cycle so the baby won't move all day long and all night long you'll start to notice patterns so it's okay if there are long periods of time that you're not feeling the baby move they're probably just asleep now i always found that the baby seemed to wake up as soon as i laid down to go to sleep this is pretty typical because when we are up walking around that tends to rock the baby to sleep and when we lay down that's when the baby seems to be more active and awake and at times you might just want to sleep because you're exhausted and your baby is keeping you awake but it's actually a fun time to enjoy feeling the baby move without all the distractions of the day if your significant other is in the same bed with you then this would be a good opportunity for them to fill the baby as well if they can be patient enough at 25 weeks there is more and more fat that the baby is laying down and they're starting to really fill out and look a little bit more plump. If you were thinking about doing a 3D ultrasound, this is a really great time to do it in my opinion because they're filling out and looking more and more like a newborn baby. But they're not so big and so tight inside your uterus that you can't get a really good look. So now until about 30 weeks is a great time for the 3D ultrasound. Now, if your baby were to be born at 25 weeks, they have around a 75% chance of survival, but they also still have a high chance of a severe disability. They will have to stay in the neonatal intensive unit for quite some time, a few months at least. So your OB will do all they can to stop you from delivering this early. That being said, let's talk about the symptoms of preterm delivery versus Braxton Hicks. Braxton Hicks contractions are like practice contractions. They are considered normal and they don't mean that you're gonna go into labor early. It's just your body's way of preparing for labor. If you haven't noticed any, that's totally fine. Don't worry about it. But if you do notice them, it usually feels like tightening of the muscles in the uterus. Braxton Hicks makes your tummy feel really hard, but they're not painful, but they might feel a little bit uncomfortable because of the tightness. As far as the timing, they are unpredictable, and irregular they don't have a pattern and they don't get more frequent or stronger over time real contractions are different they may come in regular intervals but they may become stronger and more frequent over time okay so Braxton Hicks irregular and they don't have any predictable pattern and they don't become stronger or more frequent over time real contractions are regular and become more intense and more frequent over time also Braxton Hicks contractions don't come with other symptoms like a gushing of fluid or vaginal bleeding and if you have any of those symptoms you need to call your OB right away and also if you just aren't sure call your OB that's what they're there for they have tests that they can do to evaluate to see if you might be having preterm labor or if it's just Braxton Hicks in the office they can check your cervix to see if it's dilating or thinning 
they can also use an ultrasound to measure your cervix. And this is something they can track to see if your cervix is getting thinner over time. There's also a lab test that they can order called FFN, or fetal fibronectin. FFN is a protein and it's produced by the fetal cells and it's thought to be kind of like a biological glue that keeps the fetal sac sticking to the uterine lining. The FFN test is a cervical swab that will help tell the likelihood on if you're going to go into labor within the next one to two weeks. If your FFN is negative, that means you have less than a 5% chance of giving birth in the next two weeks. As for you, by 25 weeks, women gain an average of 15 to 18 pounds. Your belly is getting bigger, about the size of a soccer ball by now. Big, but not big enough to be in your way too much, at least not yet. So this is a great time to be doing things to get ready for the baby. One thing you might be doing without even thinking about it is called nesting. We all have this natural instinct to get the home ready for the baby. So if you find yourself wanting to reorganize, deep clean, and do some baby shopping, that is totally normal. Go for it while you're still feeling great. And let's talk a minute about maternity clothes. Now, some of you might just be starting to need maternity clothes and others, like me, might have been wearing maternity clothes since week six, whatever. It's all totally normal. But now, pretty much everyone is gonna need to give in and buy some maternity clothes because you aren't going to be getting smaller anytime soon. So let me give you some advice from someone who has done this baby making thing four times. Don't go overboard, but you need multifunctional pregnancy clothes. And what I mean by this is buy clothes that you can wear now and wear when the pregnancy is done. Because for most women, you don't walk out of the hospital after delivering your baby in your favorite pre-baby jeans. <laughs> I wish, but that definitely is not the case. Thankfully, there are some great companies that know that and make maternity clothing accordingly because it's gonna take time for you to get back into your old pre-baby size. Now, for those of you who choose to bottle feed, totally fine, thank you for taking such great care of your baby. But for those of you who are nursing, sometimes nursing helps with weight loss and sometimes women don't lose the baby weight till they stop nursing. So your body is gonna do you. And so for anybody who is nursing or is bottle feeding, I recommend I recommend that you pick maternity clothes that look great when you are pregnant and look great after you deliver. And for nursing mamas, pick ones that you can nurse from easily too. This will save you from having to buy too many unnecessary articles of clothing that you might only wear for a short time. And I will link to some of my favorites in the description down below. At your next OB appointment, your OB will likely want to screen you for gestational diabetes. This is a type of diabetes that you have just when you're pregnant and goes away when you deliver your baby. This test is a blood test and it's drawn after you drink a large amount of sugary drink to see how well your body can control your blood sugars. Now your OB will provide you with a really sugary beverage that you'll need to drink before your appointment. At your appointment, they will check your blood sugars to see how well your body absorbs all that sugar. And if your blood sugars look good, then you pass the test and you don't have gestational diabetes. If your blood sugars are high though, they will then have you come back for a different blood sugar test to determine if you have gestational diabetes or not. If you do, your OB will probably either give you a special diet to keep your blood sugars under control, or they might have you take insulin shots to control your blood sugars. Either way, it's important to keep those blood sugars under control when you're pregnant. High blood sugars can cause your baby to grow too big, which could cause a difficult vaginal delivery, and when your baby is born, they might have lower blood sugars. If you do have gestational diabetes, that doesn't mean that you're gonna have diabetes after the baby is born. That being said, studies show that women with gestational diabetes do have a chance of developing regular diabetes down the road. So just something to be aware of. Usually when your OB checks your blood sugars, they will also check a CBC or complete blood count to check for anemia. This is not terribly uncommon during pregnancy. It's so common in fact that your prenatal vitamins probably already have some iron in it to help keep your iron up. But if you're still anemic even with your prenatals, your OB might put you on an, an additional iron supplement. Be aware iron can cause constipation. So if you do take an extra iron supplement, make sure to eat a lot of fiber in your diet so you don't get backed up. I've talked a lot about constipation in some of my previous second trimester videos, along with heartburn, leg swelling, and other common symptoms that you might experience during your second trimester. If you're new to my channel and you haven't seen those earlier videos, I highly recommend that you go back, check out some of my earlier week-by-week -week second trimester videos. They're filled with a ton of good information. Also, if you're new, 
subscribe to Diana in the Pink and make sure to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of my future videos. Also, just to add this disclaimer, these videos are intended to be educational. They are not intended to diagnose or treat you. Please still see your OB on a regular basis. Right here, I am going to put a link to my pregnancy week by week playlist. Click on that and I will see you over there. Well, at 24 weeks, the survival rate doubles. It actually goes up from around 33% to about 60%. So more than half the babies born at 24 weeks can survive.